Russell Institute of Learning, powered by the WEAR concept, working at Renewing Education, welcomes you to another Sidebar Education broadcast hosted by Dr. Jan Ware Russell. Well, welcome to all of you who are joining us and whether you are joining the video version or the audio version, we're so glad you're here. I am with my daughter, Ashley, who will often be a guest on our programs. And so what I'd like to do today is before we get into our specific question about how she views the difference of um, an online school for homeschooling versus what happened during the COVID-19 and the distance learning. I also want to say that uh, our studio is live. Mine is outside, so you may hear some roosters, you may hear some trucks in the background, and Ashley, if you're not able to watch, she's at home with her littlest one, whose name is Nico. And so before we get started, Ashley, why don't you share with the people about your four boys and their range, ages, and all that's going on in your life with them? Well, hello. Um, I have four boys, and the oldest is 16. His mm. name is J.D. Jr., and then I have a 12-year-old uh, named Breeze, and then a five-year-old named Nolan, and then this mm. is Nico, who is six months old currently. All right. So it was about two years ago that I think you had gone to – homeschooling the boys but it was through what we would know in the state as ECOT it was an online school how did that work for you with the two oldest boys um we liked it I think that I liked it more than they did um I just had the control and the knowledge of where they always were and what was going on um I feel like it was actually more about five years ago that they started that and it was probably three two to three years ago that ECOT was then um, taken away as an option and they had to go back to um, regular public school um, and they were happy about that move I wasn't necessarily but it, we have had that change for a couple years now and it's going fine with them <laughs> or it was. So the choice to go to an online school, um, can you tell us more of what, what caused you to make that decision? Um, we moved from one school district to another school district. <laughs> that doesn't score as well um, in general. So I didn't really want them to be going to a school that has problems or is not as safe or I didn't feel they were going to get as good of an education. Okay. So then they have made the transition back to public school, as you said, maybe a little easier than you did because now they're back into a, an environment that I'm hearing you say that safety issue the community safety issue. Yes, and um, our school district allows us to lottery. Um, when ECOT was um, kind of defunded or whatever, it was the middle of a school year, so they had to go to their assigned schools for the rest of that year. But I've been able to lottery JD into a, a better high school. To. I had lottery breeze last year and he didn't get it, but um, and I did the lottery this year, but it's all been on a standstill since they shut down the schools. All right, so in the difference that you saw when they were being homeschooled and you saw them every day to now what happened when the COVID 19 did distance learning. What did you see as the difference or were there similarities that you saw? Um, well, the biggest difference and problem I, I feel like is that 
um, the, the shutdown for COVID-19 was very abrupt and sudden. Um, in our state, it, we were one of the first states to shut down schools. Um, so there wasn't a structure and, and infrastructure as well set up to where um, doing ECOT or other distance learning that you choose to do, they give you a computer, they have all of your classes and all of the teachers and everybody set up for distance learning to begin with. They make sure that you have internet um, before you're required to do anything. Um, and that just wasn't possible um, with coronavirus, but the school did give out computers. You could go pick up laptops, you know, after a while, the first couple of weeks, there wasn't much um, communication. I think originally they the governor said we were on an extended spring break or something. Um, but it didn't, it didn't have enough structure or, um, and nobody had an actual answer. Like there wasn't a lot of cohesive communication. So all the things that are not, concrete and settled made it much more difficult to do distance learning with this situation where it wasn't so difficult before because we were set up with all the tools and okay. instructions. That you and need. so can you tell me what was the difference of the boys attitude or uh, their engagement between when they were homeschooled through ECOT to this distance learning? Well, they knew with ECOT they had to be up by nine or whatever and had to log in and check in and this, that, and the other. And, you know, so they would do that um, with the coronavirus again because there wasn't really any schedule or set things going on until the last couple of weeks, and there still wasn't for each class. They were much more lax and, like, you know, Basically, school's been out for the last three months. All right. Now, let's talk about you as a parent. This is our last question, and I know Nico is, is pushing us to the end of our program. He's just loving his little thumb and, and teething there. Um, what do you, as a parent, think would be the best support for you? Parents need some kind of support when their students are being homeschooled, whether it's through an online school or the distance learning. What do you as a parent need? Um, again, the, the structure um, is very important that and the communication of that structure to, to have your student needs to be logged on at this time and they have class at this time and you can reach this instructor these different ways and these are the assignments for this week you know different different things where the students have access to all that as well as the parents can have their own access and not have to rely on their middle schooler to tell them what they're supposed to be doing which <laughs> Well, that's a whole nother uh, episode. We'll come back and probably talk about each of the boys and their learning experience because haven't you found that having at least three of your four in school, they each have a different type of learning style or approach to education? Yes. All right. Well, I am so glad. And, you know, I also want people to know that some of our episodes are going to go back to when you were a child. And how well did I parent as a younger woman at that time without the experience that I have now? And, and for me, I'm just thankful you, you did great. I am so proud how you have, um, you made it through. <laughs> well, thanks. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. We look forward to you coming back and being part of our ongoing discussion about education and what are the needs of the parents 
and what are the needs of the students and there will be times we're even going to be interviewing other teachers to see what is it that we can do to assist and improve the education system that is currently out there. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. For more information, contact us at Russell Institute of Learning at gmail.com. You can contact us at our tinyurl.com Russell Institute of Learning website. And make sure you mention ID code HELP for a special introductory offer.